Welcome back fellow coding facilitators, Jared O'Leary here with BootUp. In this video, I want to show you the lesson plans that are on BootUp's website. So we previously had it so that the lesson plans were in Google Docs. You can actually still find those. If you simply click on this link, it'll send you straight to there. But on our new lesson plans, it shows you the basic information like when we recommend that you do this, as well as some of the practices and concepts you might engage in. And then if you scroll a little bit further down, it shows you a project preview. So if you're unsure what the project looks like, just click on this and it'll play the video. Now we have some tabs here to make it a little bit easier to sort through some things. So the at a glance, this is will give you kind of an overview of what to expect in this project and is typically the thing that like administrators want to see. So for example, we have here are the various objectives and standards. So these objectives are both process objectives and product objectives. So what kids will learn while they're creating and through the creation of the project. And they are written both as statements and as questions, depending on how you prefer to do that. In every one of the lessons, we also include connections to some of the main standards that are discussed, as well as some of the reinforced standards. These are CSTA's national standards. And if you wanna actually learn more about it, just simply click on the source link. Now the next section on here are the practices and concepts. These are from the K-12 computer science framework. And again, you can click on the links and it'll send you directly to that so you can learn more about these practices and concepts. We also have here the scratch blocks that are used in this project. If you click on one of these images, if you're like, I don't know what the my block blocks are, when you click on that, it'll actually show you the images. So you can go, oh yeah, that's what those blocks are. We also include some vocabulary words that are typically used in here. We'd like to include at least two definitions for each one of these. So you can kind of get a variety of definitions and we include the links for where they were originally sourced from. We also have some suggested connections for various subject areas. So you can read through these to find some ways to connect this with other subject areas like math and media arts, or even to some vocations. And then lastly, in this particular section are some of the generic resources, like the actual example projects, some of the project files. So that way, if you're using the offline version of Scratch, you can actually download them using those project files there. Okay, so that's the at a glance. Under project sequence, we have different sections in here. So we have the preparation. This is what we recommend you do before you actually teach the lesson. There are a lot of resources in here that are helpful. And then we have the getting started. This is kind of like the intro material where you will kind of review and demonstrate what kids are going to work on today and include some different example questions, etc. Now, anytime you see one of these triangles, you can actually click to expand to see, okay, well, what are the practices reinforced in this section, etc. And in every single one of these on the left side, we have, here's what I would have actually done or taught in the class with the recommended amount of time. And then on the right side are some supplemental resources. This is especially important when you get to the project work section, which has like step-by-step -step everything I would have done to teach this lesson in the class. So it tells you about how long it should take to do this. This is a particularly long project and it includes the step-by-step -step on the left. And then again, some resources on the right. So for example, some reference guides, some videos, that way, in case you're like, I don't know how to use bitmap or vector mode, those videos, about five minutes each, will show you how to do that. Now, again, you can click on the triangles and it'll show you what specific standards, practices, and concepts are reinforced in the section, but they're collapsed by default just to kind of make this easier to digest. Okay, so there's a lot of steps on this project. This one's a particularly advanced one, or at least has many steps. But at the bottom of each one of these sections is an assessment. So the assessment has different standards that it connects with, and it has summative assessment, formative assessment, and ipsative assessment, the three different sections with some explanations and some questions for you. Now, if you're unsure about assessment and computer science, make sure you check out the resource that's right here. Uh, this particular resource has several pages that unpack each of these some more in relation to coding with Scratch. All right, so the next one is the extended learning. So this is where you'll find the project extensions, differentiation, etc. So the project extensions are formatted just like before. These are basically like one-off ideas that you can use for like adding in variables or adding in some functions, etc. And again, left side is what I would have taught. Right side is supplemental resources or questions. Now, if you scroll further down, there's some suggestions for differentiating for less experienced coders or more experienced coders as well as debugging exercises. So each one of the projects for Scratch has at least three examples here, and most of the Scratch Junior ones do as well, as well as sometimes a microbit version of a debugging exercise. Now, when you click on the top part, the question, it'll take you directly to it, and you will try and solve the bug. And then this little bullet point right after it is going to actually show you one or more answers for how you can solve that particular bug. 
And by the way, there's even more debugging exercises if you click on this. It's a studio with like 150 some odd debugging exercises in there. So it'll keep you and the kids pretty busy doing some cool stuff and solving some fun bugs. Okay, so unplug lessons and resources. Each one of our lessons includes a link to the unplug lessons and resources spreadsheet. This has well over 100 unplugged lessons in there. So I recommend checking those out and reading through this particular section. And lastly, we have our reflection and sharing. So these are some suggestions on how you can get kids to reflect on what they were learning and share what they're learning with others. All right, so the very last section, if you are on a Scratch project and not Scratch Junior, will be a coder resources section. So this is basically the student facing materials. So if the students go up to the student tab, click on Scratch, all they'll see is this tab, the coder resources. They won't see all the lesson plan stuff because quite frankly, they don't need to know it. All right, so if you scroll down, the project sequence is open. Now, when you click on any one of these steps, it will open up a slideshow that has a video that you can watch where I show you how to do this step. And then it has a summary of the different steps that are demonstrated in the video. And it does this for pretty much all of these. So any one of these that you click on, it gives you some more information, as well as all the project extensions. It gives you links to the debugging exercises. Note, it does not give you the answer. It only gives you the problem to solve. And then it includes like the example project and some more videos to learn how to do some extra stuff for your project. So if I were actually teaching this lesson, if I had done this a couple times, but maybe I haven't done it in a year, I would actually just go to the code of resources and just give myself a little refresher. Oh yeah, the first step that I'm gonna do is create levels. Okay, and then after that, I'm gonna show kids how to create the player controls. And if I forget how to do that, I can just pull this up and go, mm, what step was it? Mm, okay, that's how I do option number three. But if you want more detailed stuff, you can actually go into the lesson plan and go there. Now note, if you do want to modify these in any way, we do include links to the coder resources, so you can actually modify them to add more stuff or maybe customize it so it like, I don't want this project's extension, but I want this other one. You can change that by going to this, opening it up, and then going to file and make a copy for yourself. I hope this overview was helpful. I know that it was a lot because there's a lot to cover in our lessons, but I hope the lessons are very helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know something that you learned or created in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe, like, and check out the links in the description for even more free resources, such as videos, free lesson plans, and our podcast.